The future must not belong to those who slander the Prophet of Islam. But to be credible, those who condemn that slander must also condemn the hate we see in the images of Jesus Christ that are desecrated, or churches that are destroyed, or the Holocaust that is denied. Yeah. That's before he decided to start talking about the Crusades, obviously. Uh, Eric Stackelbeck is here, uh, acclaimed investigative reporter, author of ISIS Exposed, Beheading Slavery and the Hellish Reality of Radical Islam. And he's the host of The uh, Watchman with uh, Eric Stackelbeck. There's the uh, book on your TV screen. Welcome. Good to see you. Steve, great to be here. All right. Uh, you get right to the meat of it in your, in your title, I, I, I say, ISIS. Yeah. You know, the, the president of Egypt today said, you know, we're ready to, we're ready to take on this, this greatest threat that we've sure. seen in, in decades and sure. who knows how long. Uh -huh. and, and, and Obama and the United States, they have no interest in it. Uh, Steve, it's unbelievable. Look, uh, General Sisi, he's not perfect, of course, but look, this guy is a godsend in the Middle East. This is a guy who's cracking down on the Muslim Brotherhood, who's confronting ISIS, who has a good relationship with Israel, by the way, which is a great thing. Yet we are isolating the likes of Sisi in Egypt, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, King Abdullah in Jordan. Steve, all of our allies in the Middle East were isolating. In the meantime, we're embracing the likes of Iran and the Muslim Brotherhood. And we're do uh, right. We're doing it because everywhere Obama has touched and everything Obama wants it would be to put, if, if Obama had his way, he'd have the Muslim Brotherhood in charge of the entire Middle East. What is that about? This isn't na naivete. This is an yeah. ignorance. This is a man with a plan. Yeah, you know, Steve, he knows exactly what he's doing. Like you said, not naivete. <coughs> and again and again. Uh, President Obama has empowered the likes of the Muslim Brotherhood. Look, I think at the end of the day, Steve, I've interviewed the Brotherhood face to face. I've interviewed Brotherhood <laughs> leaders. I write about in this book, actually, ISIS Exposed, uh, my, my meetings with them. These are guys who wear suits and ties. Yeah. Steve, they're eloquent, they're Western educated, and President Obama seems to think these are the good guys, yet they want the same exact thing as ISIS. Different tactics, of course. Uh, ISIS is burning and beheading its way across the Middle East. Uh, the Brotherhood does it the stealthy way, Steve, and they get jobs in the media, government, In the academia. State Department, in all the government Absolutely. agencies. Yep. Same end game. Yep. Caliphate, Sharia law for one and all. All right. You talk about in the book, and this is a very important part of the book, uh, how this is all coming to America. How, how uh, America is a recruiting ground now for, the, for, the, for ISIS. Um, how do we stop this? You know, Steve, number one, uh, chilling, just a month ago, the FBI director said that in all 50 U.S. states, there are active investigations, ISIS-related investigations. <laughs> that includes Hawaii and Alaska. Wow. So the barbarians are not just at the gates, they're inside the gates. How do we stop it? Number one, I think, in the Middle East, which is the base for ISIS, obviously, Iraq, Syria, the caliphate, although they are here. <laughs> um, smash that caliphate, Absolutely. Steve. Absolutely. Decisively kill destroy kill, kill them. And when you do that, you demoralize the global right, movement. We right. crushed the Japanese war machine, German war machine, right. World War II. Need to do the same thing here. Obama won't do it. We have we not only ignored them, you know, they say we were taken, I think you might even say in the book we were taken by surprise or whatever, oh, yeah. but we were taken by surprise, but then once we became aware of it, we as a nation, Obama's an administration, we, we did nothing and we're doing nothing. We're letting them march on and behead people and yeah. enslave people, as your book said, and rape people, yeah. and we're letting them take land when they're out in the open marching their prisoners down in convoys and we do nothing. Steve, 35,000 square miles in the middle of the Middle East, ISIS controls now. Look, about 35,000 trained foot soldiers as well, but this is not an 800 pound gorilla. We, yeah. These guys can be defeated, they can be crushed with the full might of the American military. We don't have the will to do it, Steve. This is really a Winston Churchill moment when you think about it. We need a Western leader who sees the gathering storm. Prime Minister Netanyahu sees it, he sees it. yet he's being shunned by the West. And and as you mentioned, many of the other Arab leaders see it, uh, and it might become uh, incumbent upon a coalition of Israel and those Arab leaders to do what Barack Obama will not do. I think it's going to come to that day, Steve, uh, not only with ISIS, but with that Iranian with nuclear Iran weapons as well, program. Yeah. Iran is the head of the snake at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and so I think yeah. one of the best lines Netanyahu gave was referring to uh, Iran being anti-ISIS and fighting against ISIS, but the enemy of your enemy, in this case, is your enemy. That was such a profound and accurate statement. It really was. And to see Prime Minister Netanyahu, Steve, in front of Congress, it made you kind of pine for a leader like that here in America. But look, at the end of the day, Iran, ISIS, they want the same thing. They both want the caliphate. They both want to dominate the Islamic world and the world at large. And I don't want to, oh, we got less than a minute, but I don't want to overlook the fact that you talk about radical Islam as yeah. the problem. And that's something, again, 
we're not allowed to do in this country, or our administration's not allowed to. You know, what, what really bothers me the most, Steve, is that the Obama administration blames this, uh, the rise of ISIS, on poverty, lack of yeah, opportunities. Yeah, right. It's ideology that drives it's it. It's all ideology and the way they say they interpret their, the Koran. And, uh, you know, for a Christian like Obama to say, that's not Islam. Uh, could I say that to a Christian? That's not Christianity. I'm Jewish. I mean, well, how do you how do you tell somebody who you're not even in their religion that that's not your religion? And they laugh when he does yeah, that. I'm, I'm like sure it. they do. Yeah. Great to Steve, see you. Thank Good you. luck. Keep telling it like it is. Um, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the book uh, you have it. Uh, you had it on your screen. It is ISIS Exposed: Beheading Slavery and the Hellish Reality of Radical Islam. We're coming back with more. Don't go away.